This is the first part of a multi-part set of videos talking about if. Now it may seem a little bit odd that I'm spending so much time on this one function, but you'll find that being able to write if functions opens up a whole new world of saving yourself time inside of Excel. I'm going to walk through a couple different sections here and hopefully as you go through you'll see that they build on each other. As with the other videos, it's really important that you take your time and do the exercises before moving on. If you try to jump right to the end, you're going to find yourself very frustrated and confused. So let's start. The first critical idea you need to understand is what a Boolean actually is. If you look inside of Excel, you'll find different kinds of values. You have things like numbers, things like words, and formulas. There's another kind of value called a Boolean. A Boolean is just either true or false. It's kind of an odd word, it is spelled like this. The key thing behind a Boolean is that you'll notice that it only has two possible values, either true or false. Now, when you do a Boolean, it's important to understand the difference between a Boolean value and this, the word true and the word false. Now, if I look at the word true, you'll see that I typed in the word true in lowercase and pressed enter. Up here, however, it's in uppercase. That's a hint Excel's telling you this is actually a true Boolean value, not a true word. It's also centered by default. So these are the key things we're going to look for in Boolean values. We want it to be centered. We want it to be in all caps automatically. If you're working on it and you're not getting that result, something's probably wrong. Let's start working on some exercises. The first thing to understand is a basic comparison. Everything else is built around this idea. So we only have a couple of options for a comparison. We have equals, greater, lesser, greater than or lesser than, or lesser than or equal to. These are the only ways we can compare things inside of Excel. You notice that each of them is only a pair. I sometimes call this a couplet when we're working on them in class. Everything has to come down to two different values that you have some sort of comparison between. Now when I write these, you're going to see that Excel gives me a Boolean as the result. So this formula here is equals one equals one. Now it looks strange because we have an equals in front and we have an equals in the middle, but they do different things. The first equals just tells me that this is a formula. All that means is that it's a formula, nothing else. Once we get past that first equals though, Excel interprets the equal sign differently. Instead of saying that we're going to do a formula, this instead is going to tell Excel to compare the value on the left with the value on the right. Because in this case, one does equal one, it's going to give you the result of true. Now below there, we see the same comparison, but with the second number being changed to two. So this is again, the first equal sign tells us that this is a function. The second equal sign does a comparison. One equals two. The result is obviously false and so it gives us a false result. Again, you can tell that this is a Boolean because it's in all caps and centered by default. Now, obviously, this isn't very exciting. One equals one and one equals two is pretty well sorted out. We're gonna instead use this mostly for references and values. So in the examples we have below, we see that we have C18, which is the value that's in the cell right here, and we're comparing it to different numbers. The first test asks, asks if C18 is equal to 20. Now in this case, the result is false, so we get the false result. If I change C18 to 20, you'll see it changes to true. If I go back to 18, it go back, goes back to false. The rest of the comparisons are fairly straightforward. We have equals, lesser than, greater than, lesser than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. As a note, you cannot put the equal sign first in either of these two. If you put equal and then the lesser than or greater to symbol, Excel will get confused. It has to have the, the lesser than or greater than symbol first. So let's do some examples. I'll do the first one and then I want for you to take a break and try practicing it in Excel on your own. The first question we have here are chickens over 10. Now again, we want to reduce everything to the couplet, a value, a comparison and another value. In this case, we're going to use the value of chickens, which is in cell C31. 
I want to ask are they over, so I want the greater than symbol, and then the value of 10. And it tells me the result is false. Now as I start playing with these, you might also do something where you click on the cell. And notice that instead of having C31 pop up, instead the word chickens pops up. This is because I've used a feature in Excel called naming. Naming allows me to give a word to describe a cell. It makes my formulas a little bit easier to understand. Say for example you have a long spreadsheet where you refer to a tax rate value a lot. What you can do instead of coming in and doing every time tax rate for California is equal to 20%, instead of saying C52 with dollar signs all the time, instead I can give a name called tax rate to this cell. This is really simple. All you have to do is come up here to where it says C52. And if you need some more room, you can click on the little divider and scooch it over. And then I'm going to type in tax rate and press enter. Notice that when I type this in, there's no spaces. Excel has to make names that are single words or multiple words squished together. Once I hit enter, I can come anywhere in my document, push equals and type in tax rate. And now I see I have a reference to the cell that's up here. I also can't name a cell something that already exists. So for example, I can't call this cell A1 because cell A1 already exists, or Q1, Q2, because again, those already exist. I also can't use the name of a function. Let's go ahead and continue. Next we ask, are ducks over 10? It's going to be a very similar problem that we have before. Now go ahead and take a minute and start working on the other problems we have in the sheet below. Okay, now that you've worked on the problems in the sheet, let's go on to the next section. So far, all we've done is a single couplet or single test. Is a reference greater than another reference or a reference greater than a number? And, or, and not allow us to modify this. These let us do multiple tests or change the result of a test. So here's an example. I have in this section geckos, puppies, and cows as three values. I can have a basic comparison called geckos greater than three, but sometimes it's easier to think about something in the reverse. Say for example, I get the question, are there not more than three geckos? You could always write it the opposite direction. Instead of doing greater than, you could write lesser than or equal to. But sometimes it's just easier to work with it as a not. Write the comparison and then wrap it in a not. Not changes the false to true or true to false. And is the next option. And lets us bring in one, two, three, or any number of comparisons. It will return true if all of those are true. So in this example, I'm asking, are there more than three geckos and more than three cows? I have exactly three cows, so I don't have more than three. And I have four geckos, which is more than three. Because only one of those conditions are true, the whole thing is going to be false. Or is similar to and, except that only one of the possible conditions have to be true. As long as one of them are true, the whole thing is going to be true. With both AND and OR, it's important to know you can do as many as you want. I can write a single test in here. Again, this is kind of meaningless because AND is just going to say, are geckos greater than 3, true or false, and then give you the result. But you can still write it this way when you're trying to test out and make a new formula. You can also have more than just two formulas. I can have geckos greater than 3, 1 greater than 0, 1 greater than negative 10. You can do all kinds of stuff inside of here. I can even do things like math. This problem asks if 1 minus 10, or in other words, negative 9, is greater than 10. So I can do any kinds of combinations of things inside of the functions, but each one needs to turn out to be either a true or a false. You have to have a true or false in each of these. Now one standard problem you might have is someone asks you, do you have between 2 and 5 of something. So you might say, okay, well that's fairly easy. I'm going to do and our geckos greater than 2. And you might think, oh, less than 5. Well, in my math class, I just wrote 5 like this. Now this works in math because humans are smarter than computers. Unfortunately, when you get into to Excel, Excel can't make this work. Excel is going to do a single comparison is 5 
greater than geckos and then it's going to stop there it's going to say is this true or is this false in this case it's going to say true then it's going to say is true greater than two which is kind of meaningless you're going to get a weird result out of this because it's going to try and turn the true or false into a number to do the comparison so when you do a between you have to make sure you have two separate statements in other words are geckos less than five and are geckos greater than two again everything has to come back to simple couplet you have to have a value a comparison and then a value and that's the only way that excel is going to work properly the other thing to be careful about when you work on this kind of function is how to deal with edge conditions in other words do you want to be inclusive or exclusive in this case i asked do we have between two and five geckos but I wasn't really clear if I want to include the endpoints or not. If I want to include the endpoints, we call that inclusive, in other words, two and five. If I don't want to include two or five, then I'm going to call that exclusive. Right now, I am exclusive because a value of five is going to be false because five is not less than five. Same thing for two. If I give the geckos a value of two, two is not greater than two. So that's going to be false as well. If I want to turn this from exclusive into inclusive, I'm going to need to put an equal sign in. Now this is inclusive because I include the endpoints. I'm going to get both 5 and I'm going to get 2 as part of the possible results. So those are the two things people mostly trip up on with the AND and the OR options, especially when it comes to ranges. Go ahead and take a minute and work on the formulas below. I will note that not all of these require AND, OR, or NOT. Sometimes they're very simple, so don't just automatically jump into the most complicated option. Instead, try and work through and do the simplest possible answer to make it work. Also remember that you can do things like addition, subtraction, or formulas inside of comparisons. Go ahead and take a couple of minutes, work on the ANDs, ORs, and NOTs in this, and then come back together for the next section. Okay, now that you've worked on ands, ors, and not, let's go ahead and talk about if. Now when we get into if, this is typically where people start having more problems with putting these guys together. This is because if is fairly complicated. I've also noticed that a lot of students tend to have trouble distinguishing between the test and the outcome of the test. So let's talk about that. So if you look at the example I have up on the top of my screen, I've got a problem with nails, screws, bolts, and nuts. I have a test on the first cell saying, are nails greater than 10, which gives me the Boolean value. So what I suggest people to do when they're struggling with Excel, especially with the if function, is to always start with the test first. Get the test right, and then usually the results are fairly straightforward. The problem people usually have is when they jump all the way to the conclusion or they can't separate the outcome from the input. Now when we do the if function itself, we have three parts. We have the test, which is the first part right here. We have the second value, which is the value of true. And we have the third value, which is the value of false. Each of these is important. On each of these, you can do anything you want. You can have your logical test be here with an AND, an OR, and a NOT. We can have the return values do arithmetic. You can even have the results of a function. Anything that's a valid Excel function or formula can go inside of any one of these three sections. So now that you have the basic idea, go ahead and try some problems. I would suggest that first you work on figuring out the problem itself. What's the test? Once you have the test, go ahead and try to write a couple examples with it. Once you have the logical test written and you really understand it, then go ahead and try to work on the return values. Take a couple of minutes and work on this. Okay, now that you've done some practice with if, let's see it in a larger example. Usually you're not going to use this kind of like little kind of toy examples. Instead, you're going to have a large table of data. In the table of data, you generally will want to do something on the right-hand side that does an if to do some sort of calculation. Here's an example that's going to calculate some coupons for us. 
The first question asks, if age is over three, give a 10% discount. So first thing you wanna do is figure out the logical test. If you look at the row, row eight for product able, you'll see that we have different columns. The age column is right here. And we say, okay, is age over three? Well, no, age is not over three, so I want a zero discount. If age is over three, I want a 10% discount on the sale price. So we'll do sale price multiplied by 10%. Let's go ahead and write the function. First, let's make sure we have the, the logical test. Equals age greater than three. I'm gonna take that test and double click on the bottom right corner to copy it down. Once it copies down, I'm gonna look at a couple to make sure they do it correctly. So this one looks like true, which is good. And then we have faults here, faults here. So I'm pretty happy with the test. Now that the test is working, I'm gonna go ahead and write the rest of the if function. I'm gonna to go to the front, write if, and now do the two possible return values. Now for the first return value, if age is over three, I wanna give a 10% discount. So this is gonna be a small math problem, F8 multiplied by 0 0.1. Otherwise, I don't wanna give any sort of discounts, so I'm gonna write a zero. Now one kind of handy trick you can use when you're working with if statements like this is to give a blank result. If I don't put a result here, you'll see that the expression is still valid, Excel will still take it. The problem though is that some of the values are gonna be false. It's returning the word false because I didn't give it a value inside of this guy right here. If I want it to be blank, I'll do a little trick where I just put in two quotes. Two quotes can make it an empty string or in other words, a blank cell. Now you'll see it's really nice because I can quickly pull out the values I wanna look at. For this case though, I wanna do zero because I'm doing math on it. All right, go ahead and take a minute and work on the next couple of problems you have here. On each column, I want you to try and calculate the additional money or discount that you're gonna be working with. So in this case, I wanted a discount. So it would make sense to actually put a minus in it. When I'm done, I'll be able to add up all of these and have the results fairly easy to work with. Now the numbers are negative. The last piece, I'm just gonna add in them all together and end up with the new sales price. Take a minute and work on this problem. When you're done, you can go ahead and move on to the next part of the if problems, which we'll work on in the homework and in class.